The U.S. Forestry Service is evaluating several patches of land within the Hoosier National Forest to determine whether some of the trees need to be replaced. Adam Pinsker explains why this is a delicate process. The Forestry Service says that climate change is one of the big reasons why they want to go ahead with this management plan here at Hoosier National Forest. Hickory nuts. Over here we got pecans. This is our little orchard. We got peaches and pears. Andy Mahler carved out his own slice of heaven on the edge of the Hoosier National Forest outside Paoli several years ago. But he worries about what this area may look like in the future. People have been warning for over 30 years about the climate crisis that was coming. And sadly, the climate crisis is no longer coming. It is upon us. Marler is concerned about what the Forest Service management plan may have in store for the area. The plan is broken down into different sections or areas of interest. Forest managers say there are several issues they're hoping to address. Logging is a tool that we use in order to be able to meet those objectives. And we're looking at it for multi-diversity type use and we're looking at it from an ecological standpoint. That's one of many tools that we could use. And it's only a tool that can be applied to certain sections of the forest, such as Management Area 2.8, along a remote stretch of the park near Potoka Lake. Almost 100 years ago, farmers abandoned this land after it was ravaged by a drought. To fend off erosion at the time, forest managers reforested the area with non-native eastern white pine, which thrives on nutrient-poor soil. Now these trees are dying because they can't fully adapt to southern Indiana's climate can see we have diseases attacking them. We have pine canker, um, which forms those scars like the one you see behind me. Travis Swaim is a silviculturist, which means he studies trees and says this section is a prime candidate for logging because the dying white pines are crowding out the native hardwoods. This is a, a small white oak, uh, likely came from an acorn on the large mature white oak right behind you there. And as you can see, it's growing right up under this this non-native eastern white pine. Uh, the white pine's shading it out, and oak species need a certain amount of sunlight to be able to really survive. Swain says there is no lack of dying tree patches around the forest due to insect and disease issues as well. I think some of this is probably climate change related. We're seeing um, pathogenic fungi attacking our trees, root diseases, essentially root rot. 25 cents per every 100 cubic foot of timber sales goes into the federal treasury, while the rest of the revenue is reinvested into the Hoosier National Forest. Money generated from timber sales can vary in amount depending on the types of trees and market conditions. There are natural barriers to management work inside Hoosier National Forest, including miles of cave systems like this area off the Springs Valley Trail. We have large, mature, seed-producing oaks. Further down the trail, Swain shows us an area of the forest where he might recommend burning to thin out beech trees in the area and help make oak trees more competitive. There's something like 350 species of Lepidoptera, like moth and butterfly alone, that prefer oak over other trees um, to have their cocoons to feed on. But hardwood trees like ash and beech that would be burned are a favorite nesting place for bats. Indiana is home to a dozen species of bats. Two of those species are on the federally endangered list, and one is listed on the state endangered species list. You're cutting down the live trees, all the live trees in an area, or the dead trees, you're going to probably cut down a roost tree of one of these bats with a lot of females and pups in it. And when those trees hit the ground, typically the impact kills the pups and most of the mothers, too. Jeff Stant is executive director of the Indiana Forestry Alliance. Indiana was in the heart of the largest temperate hardwood forest on the planet. He has serious concerns about the management plan, beginning with the logging and burning. He worries it will leave too many oak trees and not enough other species of trees. It's all of the species together that create the ecosystem, the community. And when you just cut all those other species out, you're only leaving the, the, the food sources for just the invertebrates that feed on oak hickory and the animals that feed on those invertebrates. Stant says the forest turns over on its own when dead trees fall and knock over older trees, creating openings in the canopy. He worries removing too many trees will do more harm than good. And the combination of removing the canopy, forest canopy, over that much area and tearing up the ground is the recipe for invasive plants. Swain contends the Forest Service uses science-based methods like stocking tables, which recommends how many trees can exist within an acre without being overcrowded. 
and there's basically one of these stocking tables for all the different um, um, forest types across the country. And we have one specific to our central hardwoods, our upland central hardwoods here in Indiana. And Swaim adds that the Forestry Service wants to preserve and plant as many oak trees as possible because studies have shown those species can weather climate change. We're seeing more extreme weather events, whether it's extreme rains or longer, hotter, drier summers. The human experience throughout history is much deeper and richer. Mahler says the more time he spends in the forest, the more he is able to think clearly about some of life's challenging questions. But if you ask him what should be done to protect the Hoosier National Forest, he will simply tell you. The only way you can protect the land is by knowing it, loving it, and taking action to defend it. The Forestry Service says it may not be until 2023 when this project actually begins. Public comment sessions may not happen right away because some forestry officials are out west battling wildfires out there. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Adam Pinsker.